Good morning and welcome onto the campus of Ball State University for the 2018 Spring Graduation Commencement Ceremony. With Nathan DeYoung, I'm Jack Kaiser. It's a beautiful day out here on the quad, 65 degrees and partly sunny. Fitting way to send out these students who have worked very hard and are excited to graduate today. Indeed, Jack, a really great treat for all of our graduate students primarily because last year at Worthen Arena, the ceremony was moved into there because of weather and to be outside is a truly tremendous opportunity. 93% placement of today's graduates, which is a truly tremendous opportunity as they make their way across the state of Indiana, across the country and across the world. We have a lot in store today.
In 1918, a failed private teacher training school got a new life thanks to the generosity of the Ball brothers. These five Muncie industrialists had bought the land and buildings and given them to the state of Indiana. In 1929, the school's name was changed to Ball State Teachers College. And in 1965, it officially became Ball State University. What began as a teacher training school has grown into a doctoral research university with about 22,000 students and a 731-acre campus. After their time with us, graduates have gone to make an impact in education, communications, architecture, healthcare, business, the arts and sciences, and much more. Although Ball State's name and physical presence have changed over the years, its values, entrepreneurial spirit, welcoming community, and commitment to prepare students for real-world challenges and opportunities have remained constant. Today, we celebrate our students' accomplishments and academic excellence with the tradition of Ball State University's commencement ceremony. You just got an idea of the impact in the history of Ball State University so profound over the years. A nice look at the quad there with all the students now filing in, support all over the place. Nathan, it's quite a scene. It is, and I, what I really enjoyed about that open was that it talks about the values and the impact that Ball State University students have, not only in the communities that they live and work in, but abroad. It's a much bigger perspective because they're making impacts in those fields that they're getting these degrees in for today. And it's wonderful to be out here, out on the Arts Terrace, enjoying this year's commencement ceremony. The posting of the colors about to begin. ROTC members Alexander Owlsworth, Maria Buckler, Nicholas Henderson, Nicholas Osborne, and Noah Smock. Our mace carrier today, Alan L. Hargrave. During the ceremony, we'll hear from President Jeffrey Mearns, Executive Vice President Marilyn M. Buck, Robert Hunt, CEO of Hunt Construction, Richard Hall and Renee Conley on the Board of Trustees, John Emmert, the Dean of the Honors College, Lieutenant Colonel Mark South, the Chairperson of Military Science. Should be a fun ceremony for everyone today before they go to their respective ceremonies for their specific colleges. Graduates earning degrees of all types today, bachelors, associates, masters, PhDs. The sunshine is definitely welcome today and seeing these views from over the quadrangle here on the campus. It's 67 degrees currently out here right now and it's a treat, especially after last year having to be moved to Worthen Arena because of weather. It's, it's a different take to be able to be out here and to be able to enjoy the beautiful conditions. It'll be mostly clear throughout the day today. So as the graduates make their way from here to their individual college ceremonies, um, that'll be something that be picture perfect for say, uh, for all of our guests that we have here today. You really couldn't have asked for a better day, Nathan. Last year in Worthen Arena, due to poor conditions, but perfect conditions here on this Saturday afternoon. Morning, I should say, leading into the afternoon. The College of Architecture, Miller College of Business, College of Communication, Information, and Media, College of Fine Arts, College of Health, College of Sciences and Humanities, and the Teachers College, all represented today. You also see the decorated caps there, the gowns, all with different meanings, Nathan. Indeed, indeed. Um, each degree of a level of a, what degree these students are earning today uh, has different representation in what they actually are wearing for their actual gowns today. In, uh, in addition to their cords and uh, the sashes that they're wearing as well, represents them individually and their accomplishments as well.
an opportunity for the students to express themselves individually, yet at the same time showing unity, all graduating from Ball State University. Personally, Jack, the, the, the caps are my favorite part because it allows students to express themselves, maybe what they've experienced in college, but additionally what they may be experiencing in the future, where they're headed. And uh, it's that personal opportunity to express themselves that I enjoy most about the caps. Students will head out into the real world after college to make an impact in their careers. 93% career placement rate out of Ball State University, a remarkable number. Another beautiful shot of the quadrangle and all of our graduates, in addition to the several uh, thousand guests accompanying them, uh, their family, um, other members of the community here to support these graduates and their accomplishments that they've earned today. Thousands of members, new members to Ball State University this morning to witness our ceremony. Welcome to the 182nd commencement of Ball State University. I'm Marilyn Buck, Interim Provost and Interim Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. Please remain standing as Ms. Valerie Weingart, a candidate for a Bachelor of Arts degree and a Bachelor of Music degree, sings the National Anthem. Be seated. <laughs> Members of the faculty, graduates, parents, and friends, this is a most joyous occasion, and we are glad to have all of you here to share in this important event. It is a very special time for you who are graduating and for your families and friends. We offer our warmest congratulations. I'm now pleased to introduce the platform party, the board of trustees, the administration, and those participating in today's ceremony. Would you please hold your applause until all introductions are completed? I'll ask the platform party to stand as I call your name. Ms. Sally Falling, Vice President and General Counsel. Mr. Wayne Estopinal, trustee. Ms. Sue Hodges-Moore, Chief Strategy Officer. Mr. Brian Gallagher, Trustee. Ms. Kathy Wolf, Vice President for Marketing and Communications. Mr. Tom Bracken, Secretary of the Board of Trustees. Mr. Michael McDaniel, Trustee. Mr. B Bernard Hannon, Vice President for Business Affairs and Treasurer. Ms. Jean Ann Harcourt, Trustee. Mr. Lauren Malm, Interim Vice President for Information Technology. Ms. Marley Jaycox, Trustee. Mr. Matt Mopper, Assistant Secretary of the Board of Trustees. Dr. Alan Hargrave, Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and Director of Housing and Residence Life, who is carrying the Presidential Mace. 
Dr. Kay Bales, Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Services and Dean of Students. Dr. Adam Beach, Dean of the Graduate School. Dr. Valerie Weingart, our vocalist. Mr. Robert G. Hunt, honorary degree recipient and today's commencement speaker. Mr. Jeffrey Mearns, President. Mr. Rick Hall, Chair of the Board of Trustees. Ms. Renee Conley, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees. Dr. John Emmerich, Dean of Honors College. Lieutenant Colonel Mark South, Chairperson of the Department of Military Science. And Ms. Christy Horn, past Chair of the Alumni Council. Please join me in congratulating these folks. At this time, I'd like to introduce the other administrators, college deans, and associate deans who are seated with the graduates. Please stand and be recognized when I call your name. Kesha D. Thompson, Acting Associate Provost and Dean of University College. Dr. Susan McDowell, Associate Vice President for Research. Ms. Jennifer Blackmer, Associate Provost for Immersive Learning. Dr. Trudy Weierman, Assistant Provost for Learning Initiatives. Dr. Kristen McAuliffe, Acting Assistant Provost. Mr. Matthew Shaw, Dean of University Libraries. Dr. Cortland Koch, Chairperson of University Senate and Professor, Department of Special Education. Dean Philip Rep, College of Architecture and Planning and Associate Dean David Ferguson. The Brian Dean Jennifer Bott, Miller College of Business and Associate Deans Jashil Sharma and Mark Myring. Dean Roger Lavery, College of Communication, Information and Media, and Associate Dean Lori Byers. Dean Robert Kabam, College of Fine Arts, and Associate Dean Michael O'Hara. <laughs> Dean Mitchell Whaley, College of Health, and Associate Deans Jayan Thai Kandaya, Anthony Mahon, and Denise Siebert. Dean Maureen McCarthy, College of Sciences and Humanities, and Associate Deans Claire Chateau, Susan Johnson, and Kevin Smith. Interim Dean Roy Weaver, Teachers College, Associate Dean Anita Welsh, and Interim Associate Dean Cheryl Stump. Dr. Stephanie Simon Dack, Associate Dean for the Graduate School. Today, our interpreters are Alan Hawker and Lisa Melby. <laughs> now I'm pleased to welcome President Mearns to the podium. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and what a good, beautiful morning it is. Thank you all for joining us for this special day. It is now my privilege to confer an honorary degree upon a very deserving person. And I ask Trustee Hall and Trustee Connolly to assist me in this responsibility. And Robert Hunt, would you join us at the podium, please? The university confers honorary degrees on individuals who have demonstrated remarkable achievement. And today, we are proud to bestow an honorary degree on one of our own, Robert Hunt. Mr. Hunt graduated from Ball State University in 1969 with his bachelor's degree. And soon thereafter, he began his career with the construction company that was established in 1944 by his grandfather. Over the years, Mr. Hunt led the Hunt Construction Group to become one of America's most successful construction firms. Today, the company regularly hires Ball State graduates, and it is recognized as one of the country's largest builders of sports facilities and convention centers. Its portfolio of projects includes Lucas Oil Stadium, the Indianapolis International Airport Terminal, and dozens of major league and collegiate stadiums and arenas all across the country. Over the course of his successful career, Mr. Hunt has returned to our university to serve as an executive in residence and to mentor two immersive learning projects that involved his company, the Hunt Construction Group. The first project in 2010 centered on redesigning a transportation hub in Venice, Italy. This project involves students from the College of Architecture and Planning, the Miller College of Business, 
and the College of Applied Science and Technology. Mr. Hunt made multiple trips to our campus. He conducted online forums, and he spoke to a number of classes, meeting with students and faculty in all three colleges. In 2012, for the second immersive learning project, Mr. Hunt tasked our students with evaluating the Hunt Construction Group's brand image and developing a strategic brand image management plan for his company. And then in 2016, Ball State dedicated the Robert G. Hunt Center for Construction Management within the renovated Applied Technology Building. The center's name honors Bob and his wife, Diana, and their family's generous philanthropic investment in our outstanding students. This facility provides our construction management students with a technolo technologically advanced workspace that fosters collaboration that's required of today's construction industry professionals. In addition to his remarkable career, Mr. Hunt has built a reputation for his commitment to the communities in which he lives and the communities in which he works. He is well regarded as a national civic and business leader. And over the years, he has demonstrated his ongoing support of our university, both philanthropically and prof professionally. And so, Mr. Hunt, in honoring you today, Ball State recognizes your success as, as an alumnus, a business executive, and a compassionate humanitarian. And so, ladies and gentlemen, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, I hereby confer upon you, Robert G. Hunt, the degree of Doctor of Laws with the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining, and award you this diploma in testimony thereof, and present you the academic hood for this degree. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing Dr. Robert Hunt. I must tell you, the humility I'm feeling right now is staggering. <laughs> what a crowd. Thank you, President Mearns, distinguished guests, and especially the graduating class of 2018. Before I st start my thoughts, I want to thank the board, President Mearns, for the honorary degree of laws that's been bestowed upon me. And I'd also like to thank, although she's not here, Joanne Gora, past president of Ball State, for starting me on this journey about 13 years ago that President Mearns has brought me to today. 49 years ago, about right now, I sat out in that audience somewhere about there, and for the life of me, I cannot remember who the guest speaker was or what he or she said. What I can remember, and you're probably all thinking it right now, as I was sitting out there, is when's this going to be over? Am I right? Somebody thinks I'm right. Well, I sincerely hope I won't be that guy today for you. I hope that something I say today will resonate with somebody in the audience, and it'll be something that uh, helps propel you into the future and provide you some service. I did get some advice this morning, or over the last week or so. My daughter, who's out in the audience, said, Dad, don't be preachy. My son said, Dad, don't try to be funny because you're not as funny as you think you are. <laughs> and a couple of my friends said, be careful because your mouth doesn't have much of a filter and the best commencement address is a short one. So I'll try. As I was contemplating what I was going to talk about, it was not lost on me that today being May the 5th is Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> yep, so you do know what it is. So I live in the Southwest, and Cinco de Mayo, as some of you may or may not know, is actually 
a war between Mexico and France, and it was a battle that Mexico won. They lost the war, but they won the battle. Mexico doesn't really honor Cinco de Mayo, but we in the Southwest in Arizona kind of thought it was a great day for a party. So obviously that has resonated up here to the Midwest, and what a perfect day for Cinco de Mayo and a party for you all. So I think it's kind of serendipitous that you've got a speaker from the Southwest on a commencement day, the Cinco de Mayo, and a great day and a great beautiful day for a party. As I was formulating my thoughts, it was suggested to me that I'm frequently asked what I've learned over the last 50 years. I guess people figure 50 years out of college, you must have learned something. So one of my friends happens to be a Native American uh, from Arizona, Native American Indian, that I've gotten to know quite well. His name and his Indian name is Good Buffalo Eagle. And my wife and I have been involved with him in a program that he has where he tries to help develop future leaders uh, and teach them some, some, some things from Indian culture that will help them in their life. So in one of those times when we were with he and what they call their young walkers, one of their young walkers, a young lady whose Indian name was Lightheart Dawning, had the task of choosing for me what my Indian name should be. After a couple of days of thinking, she came up with Wise Bear. Now, I'm not so sure about that, what's so wise, but that's what the name was. And I've learned some things from them and from him about my own life path, and that's what I thought I might share today with you. Part of a Native American culture is to use what's called either a medicine bag or a memory bag. And in that, you put stones, shells, something that's of meaning from your life that you can pull out, look at, and remember uh, important moments of your life, important teachings that you've had as you've gone through life. So I pulled my memory bag out and took out some stones, and the first one that came out was about choices. And when you think about life, it's just a series of choices. Some are big, some are small, but it's all just about choices. What's important is the consequences of those choices, because all the choices have consequences, no matter what. Some are good consequences, some are opportunities to have a better choice going forward, but they're all consequences. Those consequences uh, are all from your choices. You own those consequences, you own those choices. So if you have a less than perfect consequence, Good Buffalo Eagle would call that a backward walking rather than a forward walking. So the idea is, is when you're taking a direction and you know where you want to get, you're better to have forward walkings. But the backward walkings are helpful too because they enable you to back up, change a direction, and find a new forward walking. The next shell or stone, I guess it was a shell that came out of the bag, reminded me of two words that are really important to me. Hopefully they will be to you. And I can't quite separate these two words. It's humility and gratitude. I think that humility and gratitude uh, or something that you learn uh, as you go forward in life and you look for opportunities to display both of those. I'm going to give you all a couple of chances today to, to, to use humility and gratitude in a way that I think will benefit you. All you students got here today with some help. Your parents may have helped you, you may have gotten a scholarship, but somebody put money in for that scholarship. They, somehow you've gotten help to, to get here today. I'd suggest that you might want to find those people today, reach out to them, and with a lot of humility, it will probably come naturally, share with them a thank you and the gratitude you feel for them having helped you get here. Second one, similar point, surely in your travels through this university, you have met professors that went out of their way to help you and guide you. Now they all get paid to teach and share information with you to learn. But what they don't get paid for is what their heart does when, they, when you reach out to them and ask them for help and support. I've witnessed that among several of the faculty here. When a student has asked for help, the faculty goes out of their way, at least these particular ones have, to share their wisdom and their guidance with you. So you may not get this chance again, but today, before you leave campus, find that one or two professors that you connected with 
and go up to them and thank them for that that they gave you that was more than just an education. That gratitude and that humility you'll feel really good about. They all paid it forward for you. And that's the third thing that came out of my memory bag is about paying it forward. So each of you today has, has come to this time with somebody else paying it forward for you. And after today, it's your turn. You need to pay it forward for the next generations. So if you're in the, still in the area when you graduate, come back to the university. Find that professor I just talked about. Find a way to, to pay forward what you've taken from the university. If it's not here, find another university. Find it through a church. Find it through some mentor program. But pay it back and pay it forward. You'll find great value in that for yourself. So when I was putting these remarks together, I finally shared them about five days ago with my wife. And she read it. And she said, mm -mm, the ending's got to go. You got to do better than that. So I've spent the last day or two talking to people here at the university, and an idea suddenly came to me because of the inspiration I got from students here at the university. So, so far, what we've talked about is things from my past, things I've learned. But this direction change I'm going to have now hasn't happened yet because it's about you. So listen up. I spent some time over the last few months with recent graduates of various universities, and I found a common theme when I asked them, what did you find out was different after you left the university than you expected it to be? Interestingly, the common thread was, in varying degrees, they had felt somewhat entitled to be given a good job, be given a good salary, be given an opportunity. What they all found out is, as you will, you're not entitled to anything. You're going to earn everything from here forward. So far, your parents or your family provided a house for you, provided food for you, took care of you, clothed you, probably helped get you to college. But from here on forward, you're on your own. That's why all the choices and responsibilities are yours from here forward. Now, interestingly, these students all, when having recognized that, I thought they were going to be a little whiny. I thought they were going to be a little uh, feeling like their entitlement was not fulfilled. To the contrary, much to my pleasant surprise, they all felt really inspired by the fact that they now had the opportunity to be challenged by life, make their own decisions, take all that they've learned in college and all they've learned through life and apply it for themselves. They all loved the challenge and wanted to step up to it. They all, since they had graduated during the last year, also found out the key to it was hard work, putting in the extra effort, going the extra mile, taking personal responsibility for themselves, and not expecting or allowing somebody else to do it for them. They found that that hard work, coupled with humility, humility and gratitude gave them spectacular results. Our economy is excellent right now. The opportunity is there. So if you choose and you put in the effort and the hard work, you too can have that spectacular result in your life. It's your choice. Remember, life is just about a series of choices. I believe in the youth of today. If I didn't, I wouldn't be standing here. So it's about you making a difference if you choose to. And to that, I want to challenge each of you to make positive decisions, to recognize the consequences, the forward walkings and the backward walkings, be inspired, be inspiring to others, and do it all with humility and a large amount of gratitude. Today, somewhere on this campus, I'm going to find a new stone a new, new gem of some sort to put into my memory bag. And it'll be there to remind me of each of you in today's activities. I will have a connection with each one of you that will last. And to each of you, I will expect that you will do your best to succeed and make a difference in this world. I'm going to keep that stone for a while on my bookshelf so every day I can look at it and remember each of you 
and that you're out there making a difference in the world. We're all in this together, so show what you've got. One more saying I'd like to share with you, and it's kind of born out of the idea that uh, time is, uh, life is short, and time is a little bit short for us, and so spend all your moments in time wisely. About 50 years ago, I became fr friends with a young entertainer named Wayne Newton. Now, Wayne is probably somebody that most of you have no idea who that is. Ask your parents. They may remember. Uh, he was a pretty popular Las Vegas entertainer. And I'm not saying that to, to, uh, to impress you. Uh, I'm telling you because he came up with this saying, I didn't, and I want him to have the credit for it. I just borrow it. The saying goes something like this. When you've taken a man's wallet, you've merely taken his money. But when you've, taken, when you've taken a man's time, you've taken a part of his life. I want to thank you all for giving me a part of your life today. Congratulations. Now let's fiesta. <laughs> Dr. Hunt, thank you for your remarks. Uh, Bob, as you may recall, when I shared with you in Arizona back in January and invited you to come participate in this ceremony, I said that there was one condition that you had to either deliver a beautiful day or your company was going to have to build a dome over the quad <laughs> to protect us from the rain. And consistent with his success in business, he chose the most cost-effective and the most beautiful solution to that problem. So thank you very much for this great day. Now, Provost Buck, it's our privilege to begin proceeding with the awarding of our other degrees this morning. We will proceed with the awarding of the doctoral and specialist in education candidates. Will the candidates for all doctoral degrees and education specialist degrees please rise? President Mearns, as Interim Provost and Interim Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, I present to you those candidates who have completed all the requirements for the following advanced degrees, Doctor of Arts, Doctor of Audiology, Doctor of Education, Doctor of Philosophy, Doctorate in Nursing Practice, and Specialist in Education. Ladies and gentlemen, of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, I hereby confer upon you your respective degrees with all rights, honors, privileges, and obligations thereunto pertaining. The diploma of this university shall forever be the testimony recognizing the very high level of intellectual accomplishment that you have attained. I welcome you into the honorable company of scholars. Congratulations on your special achievements. The candidates for the degrees will now process to the platform to cross as their names are called by Dr. Stephanie Simon Dack, Associate Dean for the Graduate School, and be invested with symbols of their degrees. Dr. Deborah Mix, Professor of English, will lead the candidates to the podium. Bruno? Madolo Cabrera. Assisting with the hooding today is Don Esther, Professor of Music Education. <laughs> Susan Eldgen Sherl. Assisting with the hooding today is Don Esther and Kevin Garrity. Associate Professor of Music Education. <laughs> 
Phoebe Ishwen Chai. Assisting with the hooding today is Paul Riley, Professor of Music Performance. Olivia Batten, assisting with the hooding today, is Blair Mattern, assistant professor of audiology. <laughs> Laura Aliman Hunt, assisting with the hooding today, is Blair Mattern. Michael Cleary, assisting with the hooding today, is Claudia Updike, Professor Emeritus of Audiology. Autumn Marie Barry, assisting with the hooding today, is Laura Stevenson, Assistant Clinical Professor of Audiology. <laughs> Alexandria K. Gray. Assisting with the hooding today is Laura Stevenson. Sarah Cooper, assisting with the hooding today, is Dr. Diana Bance, Associate Professor of Nursing, the Program Director for Masters of Nursing. <laughs> Allison Garby, assisting with the hooding today, is Beth Kelsey, Assistant Professor of Nursing, and DNP program. <laughs> Laura Michelle Ingram, assisting with the hooding today, is Beth Kelsey, Assistant Professor of Nursing. <laughs> Mandel Drew Dorsler, Assisting with the hooding today is Deborah Siley, Associate Professor of Nursing. <laughs> Joseph Daniel Borders. Assisting with the hooding today is Marilyn Quick, Associate Professor of Educational Leadership. Robert Nicholas Flowers. Assisting with the hooding today is Marilyn Quick. <laughs> Guizzi Base Okeditsi. Assisting with the hooding today is Lisa Puffpaff, Associate Professor of Special Education. Matthias Ludwig Ress, assisting with the hooding today, is Holmes Finch, George and Francis Ball Distinguished Professor of Educational Psychology, and Elizabeth Riddle, Professor of English. <laughs> Rita Sita Mamadou. Jigande. Assisting with the hooding today is Megumi Hamada, Associate Professor of English and Assistant Chair of Programs. <laughs> T 
Tom McAllister, assisting with the hooding today, is Megumi Hamada. Mary Florence McGinnis, assisting with the hooding today, is Michael Donnelly, Director of Writing Program and Associate Professor of English. Michael Martinowitz, assisting with the hooding today, is Gerald Cassidy, Chairperson of the Department of Educational Psychology. Christopher Thomas, assisting with the hooding today, is Gerald Cassidy. Evan Andrew Kane, assisting with the hooding today, is Andrew Davis, Professor of Psychology, Educational Psychology. Mark Jeffrey Hall, assisting with the hooding today, is Joseph McKinney, Professor of Educational Leadership. Mary Tuttle Imboden, assisting with the hooding today, is Leonard Kaminsky, Director of the Fisher Institute for Health and Well-Being. <clears throat> Darren Michael Gustin, assisting with the hooding today, is Lori Boyland, Chairperson of the Department of Educational Leadership. Jonathan Quincy Harris Sr. Assisting with the hooding today is Marilyn Quick, Associate Professor of Educational Leadership. <clears throat> Catherine Trinkle. Assisting with the hooding today is Marilyn Quick. <clears throat> Camilla Davis. Assisting with the hooding today is Sharon Fraser Burgess, Associate Professor of the Social Foundation of Education and Multicultural Education. We will now present the candidates for master's degrees. Will all master's degree candidates please stand? President Mearns, I present to you those candidates for master's degrees who have completed all of the requirements for the respective degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty that you have completed all of the requirements for graduation, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, 
I hereby confer, confer upon you your respective master's degrees with all of the rights, honors, privileges, and obligations thereunto pertaining. The diploma of our university shall forever be the testimony recognizing your completion of the first level of graduate study. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to each one of you. And you may be seated. Dr. John Emmert, Dean of the Honors College, will announce the honors recognitions. The Honors College provides distinctive educational opportunities for undergraduates of high academic achievement. In addition to their major and minor concentrations, students in the Honors College must complete the Honors Core Curriculum, consisting of six core courses in the Liberal Arts and Sciences and two additional Honors Colloquia that focus on critical analysis of issues in areas of faculty expertise. Each student must also complete a senior capstone thesis or creative project and maintain a cumulative grade point average of 3.33 or higher in all coursework. Those baccalaureate candidates who are graduating from the University Honors College are wearing the red and white honors cords. Will you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Thank you. You may, you may be, seated. be seated. Departmental Department honors are awarded to those students who graduate with a minimum grade point average of 3.5 in their major. They must also complete special work in their major as well as some form of thesis or creative project. Will you please stand and be recognized? You, you may be seated. Academic honors in writing are based upon review of a portfolio of course-related writing that demonstrates sustained excellence in writing throughout the student's undergraduate years. In addition, a committee reviews an essay written on a common topic of general interest. Will you please stand and be recognized? Students with outstanding scholastic records graduate with academic honors. These students are wearing bronze, silver, or gold medallions on red ribbons. Students who have achieved scholastic averages between 3.60 and 3.79 are wearing the bronze medallion and graduating cum laude. Will you please rise and be recognized? You may be seated. Those graduates who have earned scholastic averages between 3.80 and 3.89 are wearing the silver medallion and graduating magna cum laude. Will you please rise and be recognized? The highest scholastic honors given by the university go to those students whose scholastic averages are 3.9 or higher. These graduates are wearing the gold medallion and are graduating summa cum laude. Will you please rise and be recognized? Congratulations to every one of you who are graduating cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude for your superior academic achievements. We have 12 graduating seniors who have achieved academic excellence present today. I ask Trustee Hall to come forward and the junior marshals to escort the following students to the platform. Madeline Atkinson, Abby R. Bussey, Alyssa R. Heinzchel, Bradley Russell Horton, Allison Rose Mauher, 
Marin Marie Orchard, Madeline Marie Robling, Hannah Elizabeth Rose, Mackenzie A. Sheff, Brian J. Snow, Rachel Lee Swearingen, and Valerie J. Weingart. As chair of the Board of Trustees, it gives me great pleasure to recognize these 12 students who have achieved special academic distinction. They have completed their bachelor's degrees with a perfect 4.0 grade point average. This is an incredible achievement. As I call your name, will you please come forward to receive your certificate recognizing your achievement? Madeline Atkinson. Madeline from Sheridan, Indiana is a double major in pre-medicine and psychological science with minors in, inter in interpersonal relationships and chemistry. She is currently working as a patient support technician at Community North Hospital in Indianapolis. After graduation, she plans to take a gap year to apply for medical school entrance in the fall of 2019. Congratulations, Madeline. Abby R. Bussey. Abby grew up in Decatur, Indiana. She majored in social studies education and history with concentrations in economics, history, geography, and government. She is a member of the Honors College. During her time at Ball State, she has been involved in Crew, History Club, Freshman Leadership Council, College Mentors for Kids, Intramural Sports, and the Professional Education Committee. Her plans after graduation include a mission trip to Germany as well as trips to New York and Canada. Her future plans include either teaching or continuing her education in graduate school at Ball State. Congratulations. <laughs> Alyssa R. Heichel. Alyssa from Oregon, Ohio, majored in pre-medical preparation in chemistry and minored in biology. She was a member of the soccer team, setting the record for number of wins by a Ball State goalkeeper. She also became only the second Ball State soccer player ever to be named first team academic All-American by the College Sports Information Directors of America. She has volunteered at IU Health uh, Ball Memorial Hospital and at Ball State's youth soccer camp and is a member of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. In the fall, she will be going to medical school at Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan. Congratulations, Alyssa. Bradley Russell Horton. Bradley was born on Long Island, New York, but primarily grew up in Avon, Indiana. He is a dietic dietetics major who enjoys playing piano, studying music theory, theory, and volunteering at the YMCA. After graduation, he is attending Ball State to attain a Master's of Science degree in Nutrition and Dietetics. He also plans to produce, pursue a PhD in Nutritional Science so that he can become a researcher in sports nutrition and in phytochemicals. Congratulations, Bradley. Allison Rose Moore. From Fort Wayne, Indiana, Allison majored in speech pathology and audiology. Her activities include volunteer work through local organizations in Muncie and Fort Wayne. After graduation, she will continue her education at Ball State by attending graduate school for speech pathology. Congratulations. Marin Marie Orchard. Marin is from Muncie, Indiana, has majored in both public history and women and gender studies. 
She has been an Honors College peer mentor, served on the Honors Council and the College of Science and Humanities Dean's Advisory Council. She's also participated in the Virginia Bee Ball Center for Creative Inquiry Project. After graduation, she will attend graduate school at American University in Washington, D.C. to study public history and women, gender, and sexuality studies. She would like to pursue a career in museums, focusing on the responsibilities of museums and educational institutions to engage visitors and to go beyond the walls of the institution to the community. Congratulations, Marin. Madeline Marie Robling. From Jasper, Indiana, Madeline majored in both political science and women's and gender studies. She is a member of the Honors College. She has been a member, has been a student orientation leader, a welcome week leader, and a member of the College Democrats Political Science Student Association, Student Government Association, and Circle K International. She has been recently hired as the programs manager for Hoosier Women Forward, a first year political and civic leadership training program designed to empower democratic women to become more active participants in politics and leaders in their communities. She will be applying to graduate programs and intends to earn her PhD so that she one day can become a professor. Congratulations, Madeline. Hannah Elizabeth Rose. Hannah is from Selma, Indiana, is graduating with a bachelor's degree in special education with emphasis on intense, mild interventions, K through 12. She volunteers with Delaware County Special Olympics and also works part-time by providing respite care to a woman with Down syndrome. After graduation, she will attend the University of Indianapolis to earn her doctorate in occupational therapy. Her dream is to work at Riley's Children's Hospital in Indianapolis or an outpatient pediatric rehabilitation center, specifically for children with disabilities. Congratulations, Hannah. <laughs> Mackenzie A. Sheff. From Fort Wayne, Indiana, Mackenzie majored in exercise science and pre-physician assistance with a minor in biology. She has been active with the National Alpha Lambda Delta Chapter, a member of the Exercise Science Club, and served as a representative of the College of Health at the Indiana State House. She also helped serve the Muncie community through volunteer work at the Muncie Mission Ministries, Muncie Animal Care, and Hillcroft Day Services. After graduation, she plans to pursue a master's degree in health care. Congratulations. Thank you. Brian, Brian J. Snow. Brian is from Indianapolis, Indiana. He is a veteran of the United States Army, to which he attributes his ability to study for long hours without sleeping. <laughs> Brian majored in cellular and molecular biology. Brian contributes much of his success to the amazing faculty in the biology department. He's, his time spent in the research lab working for Dr. Eric Rubenstein and the great environment here on campus. He has been accepted to the microbiology PhD program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison where he will be attending this upcoming fall. Congratulations, Brian. Rachel Lee Swerigan. From Indianapolis, Indiana, Rachel married in, the integrated, in Integrated Studies, a biology-psychology combination degree that she created through the Honors College called Human Slash Animal Studies with a minor in Creative Writing. She has also been a hunter-jumper on the equestrian team. After college, she hopes to become a published author and continue her work with horses. Congratulations, Rachel. Valerie Weingart. Valerie.
Mallory, a native from Salem, Ohio, is graduating with, surprise, surprise, a Bachelor of Music and Vocal Performance and a Bachelor of Arts in English with a Creative Writing Concentration. She is also a member of the Honors College and attained Departmental Honors in Music and English as well as Academic Honors in Writing. As part of the Honors College, she served as the President of the Student Honors College and was a member of the Honors College Dean's Search Committee and completed two Honors Undergraduate Fellowships. Valerie was an active participant in the Ball State's choral and opera programs, singing in many choral ensembles and performing in several opera theater productions. Upon graduation, Valerie will return to Ball State to pursue a Master's of Arts in English with a creative writing emphasis. Congratulations, Valerie. Thank you, Trustee Hall. I now invite President Mearns back to the podium to present three prestigious senior awards. Thank you, Marilyn. It is now my privilege to recognize three outstanding students who have been selected from a very competitive pool of their peers for the extraordinary distinction that they have earned. And I would like to invite Dr. Kay Bales, who serves as our Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Services, and also as our Dean of Students. Kay, will you assist me with the presentation of these awards? We begin with the Senior Distinguished Service Award for Outstanding Community Service. And I'm pleased to present this year's award to Ms. Savannah Lundgren. Today, Savannah is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Biology with concentrations in wildlife biology and zoology. Her love of conservation and community has inspired her to continue teaching forest preservation in developing countries through the Peace Corps and through other non-governmental organizations. During her time here at Ball State, Savannah dedicated more than 2,000 volunteer hours to various organizations that practiced the maintenance of forest lands and the improvement of wildlife habitat many of them here in our own community. In 2016, Savannah was an intern for Minatrista's Backyard Wildlife Habitat. She volunteered 30 hours each semester for the Red Tail Land Conservancy, where she helped with tree nurseries and forest edge management. And she also volunteered more than 100 hours at the O'Bannon Woods State Park. There, she helped with forest maintenance and she created and led an educational program called A Tree for Me. This program teaches children the importance of trees for our own physical health. Savannah participated in several field study programs during her undergraduate career, including a six-week program in South Africa in 2016. She helped plant trees, she built a wildlife rehabilitation enclosure, and again, she taught children about forest conservation. And so to Savannah, today we recognize you for your commitment to service and for your inspirational leadership to all of us. On behalf of Ball State University, thank you and congratulations. That might be the best looking mortar board I've ever seen. And it's now my pleasure to present the Provost Prize for Outstanding Scholarly Work to Ms. Anna Allen. Anna is an exceptional student scholar who pursued a research heavy undergraduate degree in just three years. Today, she graduates summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Science degree in Psychological Science. Anna was an un honors undergraduate research fellow for Dr. Stephanie Simon Dack. In 2017, Anna assisted Dr. Simon Dack with a project involving trait anxiety. Their research resulted in a publication. Anna was also a teaching assistant for Dr. David Perkins. And as an Honors College student, Anna served as a peer mentor, teaching a section of Honors 100 to incoming freshmen. 
Outside of the classroom, Anna was an executive board member for the Ball State University Dance Marathon, which is the university's largest run student organization. She also volunteered as a counselor for Camp Barnabas, a summer camp for children with special needs. Anna's research interests and her volunteer experiences have shaped her professional aspirations. She wants to use her scientific and experimental skills to advance the field of psychology by pursuing a career in pediatric neuropsychology. And so Anna, on behalf of Ball State University, congratulations on your exceptional academic record. Thank you. Finally, it is my privilege to present the John R. Emmons Outstanding Senior Award. This award is named in honor of the sixth president of Ball State University, and it recognizes a senior's cumulative co-curricular achievement, leadership, and contributions to Ball State University. The 2018 recipient is Ms. Marion Font. As president of the student organization Spectrum, Marion dedicated her undergraduate career to advocating for the rights of gay, bisexual, and transgender people. She served as secretary of diversity for our student government association. She represented SGA as a member of the university's council for inclusion and diversity, and she founded and implemented a campus-wide bathroom buddies campaign to raise awareness for transgender students. As a communication studies major, Marion also served as captain of Ball State's outstanding speech team, and she was vice president of the university's chapter of the National Communication Honor Society, Lambda Pi Eta. Ball State's speech team won the state tournament every year that Marion was a member of the team. She has won multiple competitive speaking awards at the national and the state level, making her one of the best college public speakers, not only in Indiana, but in our entire country. As an honors college student, Marion is graduating magna cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Communication Studies and a minor in Spanish. Marion is also a degree in three student, earning this degree in just three years. Next fall, she will be a teaching assistant at Syracuse University, where she will pursue her graduate degree in communications and rhetorical studies. So Marion, on behalf of Ball State University, thank you for your dedication and congratulations. Thank you, President Mearns. I now invite Lieutenant Colonel Mark South to the podium for the commissioning of 11 ROTC graduates. Thank you, Interim Provost Buck. With cadets Nicholas Alatza, Kaylin Armstrong, Craig Beatty, Andrew Berberich, Austin Berry, Javier Cox, John Gallagher, Alan Hafer, Logan Hatchell, Christopher Pinyot, and Jeremy Rex, please proceed to the stage to take the commissioning oath. State your name. Aye, Jack Military Cox. Having been appointed a lieutenant. Having been appointed a lieutenant. In the Army of the United States. In the Army of the United States. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. 
and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the office, of the office upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees or associate degrees please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. College of Architecture and Planning. Miller College of Business. College of Communication, Information and Media. College of Fine Arts. College of Health, College of Sciences and Humanities, and Teachers College. President Mearns, I am pleased to present to you those candidates who have completed all of the requirements for the respective baccalaureates or associate degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty that you have completed all of the requirements for graduation and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, I hereby confer upon you your respective bachelor's or associate degrees with all the rights and honors and privileges and obligations thereunto pertaining. The diploma of our university shall forever be the testimony of your accomplishments today. And so with pleasure and pride, I admit you into the company of educated women and men, and you may now move your tassels from right to left. You may be seated. Congratulations to all of our graduates today, the class of 2018. It's an honor today to have with us Christy Horn. Christy represents the Ball State University Alumni Association. Ms. Horn, it is my honor to present to you today the newest members of the Ball State University Alumni Association. Thank you. <laughs> And so now, just a few remarks. As we know, commencement is a celebration, a celebration of the achievements of our students who will now begin the next stage of their life journeys. But before I offer a few words of encouragement, I want to acknowledge a few colleagues who are also concluding their service at Ball State this year. Dr. Marilyn Buck, thank you for your service as our interim provost, our chief academic officer. As you, know, as you know, her service to Ball State is not yet complete, but today you are deserving of our sincere appreci appreciation for ensuring a smooth transition of leadership at an important time for our university. Marilyn, thank you very much. Roger Lavery, for more than a decade, you have served as the Dean of the College of Communication, Information, and Media. You were a champion for this college and your contributions are valued. You will be remembered. Thank you very much. And Dr. Cortland Koch, thank you for your service as the chair of the University Senate. You have embraced the challenges and opportunities of that role with passion and respect for our university. Thank you for your leadership and for your friendship. Thank you, Cortland. 
And now to our graduates, you are the reason we are here today. We're here to celebrate you. But as you know, and as Mr. Hunt said, your academic success is not just the product of your individual effort. Rather, it is the result of the sustained and collective commitment of many people, some of whom are with us here today. At Ball State, we have hundreds of distinguished faculty who are dedicated to teaching and to scholarship, and they are dedicated to treating our students as partners in the quest for knowledge and for greater understanding. Some of our faculty members are here now wearing academic regalia. This tradition symbolizes their commitment to sharing their knowledge with others while they continue the search for truth and wisdom. We also have thousands of talented, supportive staff members who are equally dedicated to your accomplishments. Now, we don't make them dress up in captain gowns, but we know and appreciate their contributions to you and to our university. Pause for just a moment right now to look across this beautiful space. It is just one example of the many, many ways that these women and these men have contributed to creating an environment that has enabled your achievements. And we have trustees who care deeply about your success. Their commitment to our mission is a source of strength for all of us. And now to another special group of people who deserve our recognition, your family and your friends. These are the men and the women who have guided you. They have been there to support you with enthusiastic encouragement, with good advice, and with unconditional love. Graduates, please stand and join me in a round of applause for your families and your friends who are with us today. Please be seated. Thank you. You have pursued and obtained this education in order to get a good job and to provide for yourself and for your family. But no matter how you choose to earn a living, please continue to serve your neighbors. As I suspect that you already know, such service is very rewarding. Throughout your experience at our university, I hope that you have been challenged to exceed your expectations. Don't settle for being average. Commit yourself to excellence in everything that you do. But always remember that professional success and personal satisfaction, they require more than knowledge and talent. To lead a meaningful life, you must embody certain core values, such as the enduring values articulated in the Beneficence Pledge. Be sincere and speak the truth. Model integrity and value integrity in others, because character matters, and so does heart. Within each one of you, there is some special motivation that brought you to our university and that brings you to this place at this time. To arrive at this destination, I know that you have overcome many obstacles, and you must know that there will be challenges and some disappointments in the days ahead. But never forget the dream that brings you here today. Continue to pursue that dream each day with passion and with courage. And please pursue it also with great optimism. As Mr. Hunt said, we believe in a brighter future, a better future. We believe in a world that can be and will be more peaceful and more just. We believe in that bright future because we believe in you. And now finally, I want to share with you that I am grateful, and I hope you are as well, that this final year also included a very special moment for our university. And that was the launch of a more visible and vocal campaign to tell the world about Ball State University. We're going to tell your stories and the stories of more than 180,000 graduates of this university. We're going to tell those stories with the passion and pride that those stories deserve, and we are sharing those stories in this ongoing campaign. And last November, as a part of this effort, we held an event in Sursa Hall where we invited a group of your peers, our senior cabaret class from the Department of Theater and Dance, to perform a song that they wrote, a song that captures the passion and the pride of Ball State University. Their lyrics communicate a few key aspects of our fundamental mission about what makes us distinctive. Their lyrics remind us that our faculty and our staff and our students 
are given the freedom and flexibility to collaborate as learning partners. Their words demonstrate that we provide an innovative and transformative educational experience to all of our students. And their lyrics prove that our history and our future are guided by our sustained commitment to the enduring values represented by beneficence, whom our, student, or whom our students affectionately call Benny. So I've asked the cabaret students. They have performed this song at various event, events throughout the school year, several times on campus, as well as performances in Indianapolis and New York City. And I have asked these graduating seniors to perform this song for us one more time today. I came to learn, to grow, to conquer, to thrive. I came to teach, to surprise, to prosper, to rise, to fly, to fly. Thank you very much, 
our cabaret students from our outstanding Department of Theater and Dance. Thank you very much. You know, these talented women and men, they are representative of the talent and the great potential that permeates this graduating class. Talent and potential that spreads across this lawn as far as my eyes can see. I hope that all of you share my passion and my pride in our exceptional university. And so to each of you, our graduates, good luck, congratulations, Godspeed. I hope you enjoy the time you will spend today with your friends, fellow graduates, and families. And again, congratulations on reaching this special day in your lives. I invite you to attend the college ceremonies beginning at 12 noon. The locations are listed in your program. The late afternoon ceremonies will begin at 3 p.m. with the Miller College of Business holding its ceremony here at the Arts Terrace and the College of Health ceremony in Worthen Arena. As you leave this area and begin moving north on McKinley Avenue, you will hear and see the bells of the Schaefer Tower Carillion. While on your way to the college ceremonies, please enjoy selections on the Carillion presented by jo Mr. John Goins. Now please rise and jo join Valerie Weingart in the singing of the alma mater. The words can be found on page two in the program. Please remain standing until the colors have passed and then be seated until the platform party has recessed down the main aisle. Thank you very much.
This concludes our main ceremony today. Students will now proceed to separate locations on campus to receive their diplomas from their respective colleges. A beautiful day making way for Ball State students to turn the tassel and enter a new chapter of their lives. Indeed, Jack. Humility and gratitude, like Robert Hunt had said in the keynote address to all the graduate students today, it is a tremendous opportunity, and we extend our deepest wishes and gratitude to them as they're enduring on their future career. Thank you for joining us. For Nathan DeYoung, I'm Jack Kaiser. Congratulations to the Ball State University Spring Graduation Class of 2018. Have a great afternoon, everyone.